Hey everybody, uh, in this video I'm going to show you how to debug an action that is screwing up in some manner. So you may have noticed that our general process is we write the code, we deploy it to OpenWhisk, and that's a real quick command line call, uh, and then we run it. And if something goes wrong, then well, what happens? Well, let's make something go wrong by breaking our code. This is the action that we used in our last video. And I'm going to switch json.parse to json.catify. And that's not a valid API in the JSON object. But I'm going to save it. And we're going to deploy it. Action update uh, action2 and action2.js. So I've updated it. Now let's try running it. And we should see something like so. Uh-oh. Status code zero, result error. The action did not produce a valid response and exited unexpectedly. So how do we figure out what happened? There's actually no uh, error message in here. Well, there's two ways of doing it. The most direct way is to take that activation ID and get the result by doing WSK acti activation get and then pass the ID. And then we will see a lot of output, including our particular error. We could see, oh, json.catify is not a function. That kind of makes sense. So that, that's one way of doing it. A more direct way, or you know, maybe perhaps a simpler way while you're kind of like rapidly writing code and, 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 and pushing stuff, you can actually open a new tab and do WSK activation poll. And this will just sit there and wait for you to call actions or wait for someone else to call your actions as well. So now when I run my activation, I'm sorry, my action, once again, it screws up. And, but in here, I can see it showed up automatically. I didn't have to actually get uh, that particular action, I, uh, that activation ID and get the output. So it's pretty handy. By the way, something else that works kind of cool and I don't know uh, how good it is or how good of an idea it is to use this uh, but you can also use console.log so if I want to actually see what my remote API was returning I could log it and I'll go ahead and I'll fix this because why not save it and update the action like so and let's invoke it again and this time it's gonna work we could see that's the tail end of the results there. But I'll go back into my tab where I'm just kind of watching and you can see, holy Toledo, uh, that is the entire JSON string. So obviously I could console.log smaller stuff and I could use this as kind of a way to, you know, debug what's going on. I could, you know, output it different values and, you know, do it the same way I use console.log in my client side code as well. Anyway, I hope this helps because you will screw up. I know I screw up pretty much every single time I do this. And this will hopefully help you uh, find those errors quicker and fix them.